our next speakers collectively have 113 years of life experience, speak two languages, and have been to more than four states, probably. <laughs> it would be a disservice to compare them to Walt Disney and Kanye West, or any human beings that we've seen before. It should be more like Willy Wonka. So, welcome to their chocolate factory. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the magnanimous, the intransigent, Pim Vuvis. <laughs> ghost of Anna Head who has haunted this gym at night ever since they started letting boys in. And to other beautiful, esteemed guests, welcome. We really appreciate your all making it out. For many of us coming off a month of senior projects, this is pretty early. We are honored to have been chosen to speak at today's commencement. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our teachers, our parents, Kim's grandparents, the entire maintenance and administrative staff, and Carl. And the head Royce cat, who we are naming Bartholomew the Apostle, for making our time at Head Royce possible. Uh, as a disclaimer, we just threw this together last night because we've been really busy catching up on Lost. Uh -huh. Just kidding. If there's one thing we've learned in high school, that wouldn't be a very thorough education. <laughs> but all you parents can rest assured that your tuition money is being wisely spent on new technology in the classroom. To illustrate, a few days ago, the two of us were racing Mr. Kinney on some sweet Head Royce motorcycles. <laughs> After a close finish, where I creamed both of them, Paul, upset about getting wrecked at sports, yet again, started to throw a fit. K-Dog turned to us, and while stroking K-Dog's goatee, K-Dog put his hand comfortingly on Paul's shoulder and imparted some wisdom. He said, in this life, the only thing you can choose is how to react to what happens to you. You can get mad booty tickled about the bad things, or you can take it all in stride. Somewhat perplexed, Paul looked up and asked no one in particular, Gee, how can I do that? Mr. Kinney looked pensively into the distance and proceeded to quote the 1950 film Harvey, which I assume is a documentary about the famous Batman villain Harvey Dent. <laughs> he said, In this world, you must be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For years, I was smart. I recommend pleasant. And that is advice that our class has clearly taken to heart. Because even though everyone is a huge smarty pants nerd, the two of us have never gone to high school with a more pleasant, well-rounded group of kids. Our class has nationally ranked robot designers, passionate advocates for social justice, animal rights, and environmental protection, literally infinity gifted athletes, and a bunch of award winners or whatever. Of course, we fall short in some areas. We actually only have a finite number of gifted athletes. We are at only about two-thirds of the national birth rate for twins. And only like three of my friends have cats. And yet, our class is very different from those noodly little 14-year-old brace-faced dweebs you dropped off for their first day of freshman year. Except for Mel, who, at the ripe young age of six and three-quarters, looks much the same as he did last year in kindergarten. <laughs> Ago, when I asked Haley Landmiller if academic dean slash assistant head of school Crystal Land was her mom, she made a nasty face and asked how even the new kids knew. 
a few months ago, she introduced herself to the new ninth graders as Miss Lamb's daughter. Joey, the lone freshman on varsity basketball, is now what film teacher Mr. Mooney's calls a closeted jock. <laughs> Finally, and perhaps most significantly, Bieber Fever struck the nation with the release of My World 2.0 in 2010, creating a deep divide in our class between Courtney Ng and everyone else. <laughs> Today, however, it would not be a head Royce party without All That Matters being played at least once, and the very interesting Liam Rubel is the proud president of the local Believers chapter. <laughs> to be sure, some things never change. Dylan Carlson is as much of a lounge lizard as ever. Frankie and Jasper were caught canoodling at the welcome back dance during freshman year. Next year, they'll be huddled around the fire together in the freezing collegiate wilderness of northwestern Massachusetts. And of course, Ian Peters is as tall and jovial as he was when I met him in sixth grade. He will always be the glue that keeps our grade together. Our teachers, even after we have hopefully passed their classes, continue to be mentors to us in the truest sense of the word. That is, you never know if you're really talking to them or actually to an ancient Greek goddess disguised as a family friend sent to guide you into adulthood while your father returns from seven years as the captive of a minor female nature deity. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Enlow, we had to read like nine Wikipedia pages to write that joke. <laughs> Our teachers also continue to be wise beyond their years except in the case of Miss Metz, who got her first cat back when Aristotle was still in a baby toga, or whatever the ancient Greek equivalent of diapers was, and is probably proportionately wise for her years. Heteroist teachers do not just teach you sweet niblets of textbook cheese whiz, like what electron transfer phosphorylation is, or the name of Teddy Roosevelt's pet cat. They teach us how to be the realest citizens we can be, to not lose our inspiration, to ask the hard questions, to have huge hearts, and to want to do things in this world for more than just ourselves. They teach us to always be conscious of our environment, to learn from it, and to work to change it for the better whenever possible. Hedera's teachers are not just intellectuals. They chase gnarly swells with us. Surf. Go on romantic movie outings. Totally platonic. And have sweet house parties. <laughs> They are a substantial part of what makes Head Royce such a unique and precious high school experience. But it is our peers who are the true precious. The preci. <laughs> Everyone in our class has their own je ne sais quoi. And we all share a love of learning. Our class is tight in ways that no other class has been before. For example, I often get asked if I'm a lifer, even though I came in the ninth grade. But aren't we all lifers in a way? Sure, Paul. But the real beauty of our grade is that everyone is unashamed to be themselves, and we accept each other as we are. There's a sense of fluidity to our grade. We don't fit into all of the classic high school stereotypes. We're all nerds, sitting together in the corner at lunch, and we love each other. We're like the 90 musketeers. <laughs> all for one, and one for all. <laughs> Well, being a part of this community as it has grown closer and closer. Whether we're showing up to watch baseball win state. <laughs> coordinating a rad last minute prank. Thanks, Olivia. We're taking advantage of the multi-purpose Facebook group to spread the word about other class events. <laughs> <laughs> Although everyone has had their own unique high experience at Head Royce with the inevitable ups and downs of high school, Throughout it all, we've been there together, telling bad jokes, complaining about our classes, and living all the other little daily happenings which have made up the bulk of the past four years. You are all beautiful and smart and pleasant people, so thank you for a great time. Don't lose the fire, and remember what it's like to be you right now with your idealistic aspirations. Don't become the wolf of Wall Street, because you're all great the way you are, and defrauding investors. Much like owning a CD collection was a lot cooler in the 90s. <laughs> we would now like to close with the eternal words of Robert Frost. Although our bodies, forged in the crucible of adolescence, have become strong and erect, 
We will never lose our inner noodliness, which makes <laughs> which, <laughs> which makes us so malleable, so kissable, and not so easily booty tickled. Thank you.